Murder Man. Excuse me, madam. I want to hammer you to the head while I listen to Murder Metal Mayhem. Spreading faster than a case of the clap in a trailer court. Able to shatter eardrums within a 666 mile radius. A podcast more brutal than all the rest. It's Murder Metal Yeah, man. What the fuck's up, motherfucker? Nice to have the uh, scorpion doing a little intro for <laughs> us there. It is Tuesday, throwing down a brand new Murder Metal Mayhem. And the last one of the year, the last episode, I should say, of the year. Uh, we're in Horns High Studios for the Horns High Podcast Network. Episode 246 going on tonight. Getting ever closer to 250 and other milestones. Almost there, man. We're almost, almost at uh, 800 thousand total listens we're almost there like ten thousand away so hitting some milestones and uh so hitting this hitter <laughs> definitely <laughs> definitely a good year for murder metal mayhem just kicking ass and taking fucking names i'm here at horns high with chris joey over it? there in the 419 studios in toledo how's it going joey ho 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 <laughs> yes oh, yeah. yes it is Christmas time in Toledo. It is, that's for sure. Been been pretty warm. I mean, last couple of days have been cold, but uh, boy, we've had some really warmer temps. Not not complaining at no, all. I ain't complaining about that shit. Uh, all right. Well, what uh, what shirts are we wearing over there, Chris? Looking camouflaged over there. Yeah, yeah. I got my uh, hoodie fleece on because it's still chilly, even though it could be worse. But right. Uh, what? Oh yeah, my Boston Asylum shirt. Fucking Baldwin Asylum. Oh yeah, Baldwin. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my Baldwin Asylum. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. Joey, nice pick. Pick for your shirt tonight. Yeah, I wore the the Slayer shirt. Slayer, yeah. like the Christmas sleigh. Uh, That's right. The fucking Tex. Tex and Miss Tex they got for us a few years ago. So we yeah. like to rock this one on the last one. Yeah, that's I wore, awesome. I wore mine to work uh I don't know, like a week or so ago and this dude's like, dude, that's the best Christmas shirt I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and I got my shine box shirt on. Hell yeah, dude. Oh yeah. My good fella's shirt. And it's funny, I wore this to physical therapy and the physical therapist has just been trying to grasp the different shirts. <laughs> but she doesn't say anything. She's a little older. Real nice though. And she's looking at this shirt. She's like, I have absolutely no idea what that means. <laughs> but I'm sure whatever it is, it's not good. <laughs> nope. <laughs> but she was like laughing about it. I'm like, yeah, no, it's not at all. Not not good at all. Go watch Goodfellas. Exactly. <laughs> so she was like, Wow, it was pretty funny. So all right. Well, very good. And uh last week we did a sick one on the Hart Brothers. Going down to FTA. Man, that's just some crazy shit. Considered to be the first U.S. serial killers. Uh, raising hell and raping and pillaging. Fucking rape gang and all of that. Rape, pillage, rape. Uh, multiple states during this late 1700s. So, And uh, we had uh, Izzy Cano here. Izzy. Or Cano. Uh, I'm sorry, I keep fucking butchering his name. <laughs> it's fucked me up because the Yankees had uh, a Cano on the team that was spelled the same way, so that's why I keep wanting to say that. Uh, but Izzy was here, which was great. His wife was here, too. Uh, but we got into the sick and twisted fucking tales of those two. Those guys were fucked. Yeah, they were. And I did the metal segment on the Legion of the Damned from the Netherlands, and we did a special killer cage match, which was fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah. And uh, usual, just stupid shit. So if you missed it, go on and give episode 245 a spin. And if you did, uh, thanks for checking it out, because we we're passing 900 to that one today. I think we might be getting oh, yeah. some new YouTube uh, followers coming over to the dark side. So we appreciate you guys if you're new and that's how you found out about us. Uh, so welcome. Uh, we also put out several new episodes, speaking of YouTube, on the 666 Seconds of Murder, as well as the metal. 
on the both YouTube channels. So subscribe. Go check that shit out. And you're yeah. getting it all the time. Get them updates and shit. Yeah, and I've got the links in the episode description for both. But you don't want to miss either one because on the murder one, I did some Idaho 4 shit. Gacy, I did Alex Murdoch. Uh, I did the Colorado Funeral Home. Done some good ones. And then Shane and I have been doing the metal ones and doing reviews, uh, you know, 10 minutes or less, 11 minutes or less. Uh, so uh, the short segments seem to be catching on. So that's awesome. So subscribe if you haven't. And uh, yeah, I think you'll like it. But tonight, a classic serial killer case, but one I bet a lot of people have never heard of before, old Pavel or Pavel Tuklin. So, a uh, Polish serial killer known as the Scorpion. Pretty cool name. It's a hell of a nickname. Yeah. And uh, yeah, his nickname's awesome. That's what's yeah, so I like it. That he's not more well known, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, but he murdered nine women, injured 11 more with some brutal fucking hammers to the head. I mean, just absolutely vicious. Uh, definitely uh, fucking just horrific uh crime span from 75 to 83 yeah almost a fucking decade yeah and we're gonna talk about that shit tonight so you'll get that in the next segment murder segment coming up uh for the metal segment now keeping with traditions and ck we used to enjoy doing these with ck run down our top metal albums of the year this was an unbelievably good year for metal so many releases it's on fucking real so we will we reveal which ones we liked so uh you might want to get your pens and paper out for this one yes. there might be some good shit you don't even know exists uh on our list so uh and i'm always curious to see what you guys come up with i got a good one myself and uh, we'll do that in the metal segment so that'll be later on and we're going to throw down a brand new killer cage match, which is where we get a list of 100 killers, 100 objects for them to fight with, a variable in the cage, and a song cranking the fuck out while they kill each other. And it is fun. Listeners love it. And we got some random listeners uh, that were li ri listeners that provided some random numbers, Chris. Yes, we do. We have fucking Daniel Ramirez. Hell yeah. Uh, is uh, Richard your cousin? I think it is something? Richard's cousin, yeah. <laughs> and then we got Colin 815 Posse Rogers. Hell yeah. And then we got the band Radio Silence. Yeah, like a rock cover band it looked like. So nice. fuck yeah, yeah, guys. So that's fucking awesome. A. And uh, we got a nasty matchup tonight in the cage, Joey. Who do we <laughs> this got? This is funny. Yeah, we got uh, Andre Chikatilo. So you know it. He, he I don't know. He, he's he's a little bit uh, along the lines of what we're talking about tonight because of the communists not wanting to reveal a serial killer in their midst. True, I, I, I felt yeah. those parallels. But anyway, uh, so Andre Chikatilo, he's going to go up against David Parker Ray, the toy box killer. His oh. dog will notch you. Yeah. Definitely a brutal fucking two there for sure. His dog will notch you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's rough, man. That's Jesus. super rough. That's so fucking nasty. <laughs> and of course, the objects we know can make things interesting. And a variable in the cage, Chris, sometimes is your oh, kin. Oh, that makes a whole lot of fucking yeah. difference. Yeah, your kin can sometimes end up in there. Yeah, Michael said he wasn't too happy about what happened to him last week. Yeah, Joey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Joey, that was pretty funny. He was going to give you some shit about it. <laughs> um, so, listener favorite, and we'll do it in the Mayhem segment. So, you got to keep listening for that. And speaking of cage matches, oh, my God. More and more building on this big match we've been talking about. We got a voicemail from Pierre Poutine. And I also got some last minute Joe Ball stuff. I'm not sure if I can get it on with this one or not, but Joe Ball's fired up. I'm going to probably <laughs> put it on at the end so the listeners, yeah, yeah. listeners, listeners can check this shit out. Uh, but this match coming up, we're going to talk about it. The fucking. It's going to be a beatdown. It's it going really to be fun. If, I, if be. I was a porn star, I might go by Joe Ball. That's pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, big thanks to everyone listening to us. Uh, we keep tearing it up. We were up a little this week, 3,200 total listens. 
We are at 790,000 total oh, listens. Oh, man. So we're getting close to 800,000. So thank you. And the YouTube channel has been just crushing it. So thank you, everybody. Fucking hey, man. You're all the shit. Uh, Chris, what about the top 10 cities listening to us? As always, number one, we got motherfucking Chirac. <laughs> Chicago, thank you. Then we got uh, two, we got Brisbane and Queensland, Australia. Number number three is uh, Vicksburg, Mississippi. Then we got the Washington fucking D.C. Oh, yeah. Fucking Clinton, Illinois is number five. Six is Honolulu, Hawaii. Yeah, awesome. yeah. Then we got Athens, Ohio at number seven. Melbourne, Victoria, Australia, eight. Number nine, we got San Antonio, Texas. Hell yeah. And number 10, we got Austin, Texas. Hell yeah. Fucking Fuck it. Yeah, Texas, fucking Australia, everybody. Thank you. That's just fucking killer. And then, Joey, how did the countries break down? The U.S. is at 85 this week, and then you got... Australia at seven, Germany two, Canada two, then the rest are Denmark, UK, Sweden, Ireland, Singapore, and Brazil. Yeah, yes. yeah, man, that's amazing. So many thanks to all of you that are listening. Speaking of Brazil, I found this fucking band. Rob Dukes from uh, used to be in Exodus. Interviewed him. Yeah. He's now in Generation Kill, um, but. Um, they're touring with this band called Claustrophobia. I feel bad that I didn't even know these dudes existed. They've been around for a long time. They're in Brazil, and they're fucking killer, killer wow. thrash metal. Yeah, really, really good. Little death thrash going on. Three-piece, absolutely brutal, called Claustrophobia. I'm not so, checking it out. I'm not, I'm not hip on them either. Yeah, I was totally caught off guard. They got several good YouTube videos, Joey. If I think of it, I'll forward you one. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, make sure you guys are checking out MurderMetalMayhem.com. I've, I've been meaning to get on there. I've been so fucking busy. I need to update it with the YouTube stuff and push the 666 second stuff. All right? Chris? Hey, yo, uh, Joey. What you got in that fucking bong? Well, I don't have the bong. I'm just rocking the fucking the chill one tonight. But I got uh, this Cherry Empire. But I don't know Oof. if I should say it like like Star Wars, like Cherry Empire. <laughs> <laughs> or if it's more like Queensryche, you know. Empire! <laughs> that belly. Cherry but Empire! It's somewhere, <laughs> yeah, it's somewhere in between those two. What you got, Chris? Uh, I got whatever's in the fucking hitter box. I don't remember what it is, dude. But I got that's a, that's but it's fire, whatever it is. I don't remember what's in here. Oh, yeah. At home, I got a fucking jar, big ass nug of that fucking uh, blackberry Oreo, and that shit's fucking dope. Hell yeah. Fuck yeah, yeah, I don't even remember what's in here. I just know it gets me high, and that makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, we got a lot on our plate tonight. Taking a trip across the pond once again, heading to Europe, Poland to be exact, hoping we don't end up. With hammer smashed faces. Fuck yeah, we should probably go grab my tool belt, get my fucking framing hammer out, and go smash the bitch and get our murder on. Oh, yeah. You can't not picture Jim Carrey on stage at Cannibal Corpse. That's that song true. Plays. That's true. <laughs> and and how can you not play that song, Hammer Smashed Face, from oh, Cannibal yeah. Corpse, when we're doing an episode like this? So, this motherfucker with the hammers. So Fuck holy yeah. shit. All right. So, tonight we're going to be doing the feature on Pavel Tuklin, uh, known in the media as the Scorpion, as we mentioned. Crimes very fucking vicious in Poland, 1975 to 1983, dealt the damage with blows from a hammer to the head. So convicted of nine murders, <laughs> another 11, 11 attempted murders. Um, some people able to identify him, you know, give police the information. Um, so remember at that time, I mean, Poland was a communist country, so... 
stark existence, you know, shortages of food. It's like you get two pieces of toilet paper. You got to do the prison trick with the hole in the middle. <laughs> and, you know, they, these people were getting snatched up off the street for, you know, smiling, you know. Um, I mean, it was fucked up. So it was a very crazy time. Um, and that's providing the perfect cover for this dude to do what he did, kind of like the Hart Brothers did last week. Right. So, Chris, I mean, this isn't the first one we've talked about. Using a fucking hammer, dude. No, there's been a couple offhand I, can, I fucking can think the of. The Pink fucking, Giant, I remember, was oh, doing yeah, some shit with the hammer. Oh, yeah, fucking Giant. Fucking, uh, what's his name? Killed his parents. Man, I just had it. Now I lost it. But, yeah, we did an episode, a few episodes on people with fucking... Uh, what, yeah, was that, Kevin, what was the Kevin kid that da- had the party? Kevin Davis. Yeah, Kevin. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, the kid that had the party. Yeah, yeah with fucking, his parents uh, in the bedroom. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, this has been a thing. I mean, it's fucking Tyler vicious. fucking Hadley, that's it. There you go, Tyler <laughs> Hadley. <laughs> so, and we haven't done it yet, but one that I want to do is the, the three guys. One yeah, hand. three guys, yeah, one hammer. That, dude, that is so brutal. Yeah. That would be a good one to do for sure. But, Joey, how obscure is Tuklin? I mean, I don't think a lot of people are going to know who this guy is. What do you think? No. No, I agree with that. Uh, you try to look it up. There's not even really a lot about it. Not Some really. Of the big hitters have, have done stories about him, but really, it's it's pretty obscure. Um, this is, you know, like we said, when communism was was taken over over there, and considering this is a little bit older of a case, they were able to probably keep it a little bit out of the media eye pretty well back then. That's a good point. That's a good point. I hadn't actually thought of the communist angle on the on that side of it uh, but that's a yeah. very very valid point i'm sure that is a big reason because you mentioned you know same with the old rostov ripper you know was was kind of sheltered from the from the press you know nobody right. really knew about it um now i had never heard of this guy before i stumbled on the world's most evil killers episode which i love that series and i immediately made note of it because i'm like this dude's fucking wild uh, plus, he's a Polish serial killer, and I don't think we've come across very many of them. I come Shane didn't so get on with this one. I know. I didn't think. <laughs> I don't know why either. I don't know if it's just I had him too close. I don't remember. But usually I try my best to think of that sort of stuff. And Jeff, either or, would have been great for this one, both right? being Polish. But uh, but now they'll have a fellow countryman to you know hang their hats on, you know, this Fuck fucking yeah. crazy bastard. And I'm not sure if he's in killers the card game or not but jeff if he's not you might want to to add him up in there (laughs) so uh pavel tuklin born in 1946 in gora poland (laughs) uh, which is a small village in a very rural area of the country outside ged uh gdansk uh some of these names are tough to pronounce get it pete you got it (laughs) um his father was an abusive alcoholic uh, who worked as a farmer (laughs) and even his mom abused the kids so they were both abusing the kids it's fucking hateful makes sense they had 11 of them though chris i I mean that's gonna get people fucking fired up yeah i mean he's uh number eight or ninth of 11 and for catholics at the time that's not uncommon right so he was the ninth kid and he had nine kills that's right that's right uh, and, you know, with that many kids, 11 kids, you could field the fucking football team. I mean, that's it's pretty impressive. Easy. Shit, dude. <laughs> so, so, Chris, I mean, we've done other stories about killers being born into families with an ab- abusive dad. But, I mean, in this case, I mean, he's he's really abusing alcohol. And I, I wonder if they're drinking McCormick's They're over definitely there. not drinking McCormick's in Poland. I can guarantee that's some white <laughs> trash American <laughs> shit. Missouri. <laughs> Missouri. <laughs> well, fucking, yeah, but, I mean, when you're, especially back, back then in a fucking communist state, fucking parents are fucking miserable anyway just because of how life's going. Now I got all these kids. Well, quit fucking for one. <laughs> <laughs> right. Tie a knot in that motherfucker. God damn. Like Jesus, I mean, you guys. Even though it's a communist state, you still get rationed out at least two wire coat hangers a fucking week, oh, right? Oh damn! <laughs> like, Could have seen old uh, what's his name, Reginald Christie, right? Right, like fuck it, dude. Yeah. So Joey, I mean, with both parents being abusive, I mean, a little bit of anger issues going on with this dude. 
Yeah, he was fucking pissed off all the time. Fucking grew up in a rough ass environment. Fucking, you know, doing chores and getting beat. And then he had this fucking issue that fucking stayed with him for a really long time. Yeah. Where he would piss himself. All he would the piss fucking the bed, time. But he would also piss himself. And I mean, this lasted, they said, until he was fucking 18, 18 years, years old. Right. Dude. I saw yeah, that. Yeah. And so, like, wow. his, 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 his whole social demeanor was fucked because. Nobody ever wanted to hang out with him. Uh. Smell, so you smell like fucking piss all the time. <laughs> and his parents. So nobody did, wants to be around him. His parents would talk about like the whole village fucking knew. Like, because his yeah. parents yeah. would talk about Awful, fucking man. goddamn motherfucker over here pissing all over my house. Fucking. What the <laughs> yeah. fuck, dude? Wow. Yeah, and they, they, they said he was like, would walk around like soaked in piss. That's fucking so- <laughs> brutal, man. <laughs> I mean, what I mean, kind of rashes and shit did that? Are, I, like oh, seriously, God. I bet I, I bet yeah. kids. I know what diaper rash looks like. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Could yeah. you imagine you just soaked in piss constantly? And it's your oh and, man! And, and you, to make this even more disgusting of a conversation, but why not? It's murder, metal mayhem. Is I'm assuming that maybe the diet he was on wasn't the best. Oh, so you I mean, know think of how bad that piss had oh, to stink. Yeah. I mean, you know, he smelled like, like baloney. <laughs> It's, no, he's eating like cabbage and shit. Yeah, fucking I mean, like it's, just it's the, already it's piss, so it's gonna stink. But I'm sure it was extra special. You know, uh, it with was. all that going on. So wow, just fucking crazy. If he was pissing till he's 18, he was probably drinking his gross ass mom's titty milk as long as he could too. Probably. I don't know, dude. This kid was fucked up. So extreme violence he was subjected to throughout childhood. Definitely going to mold him into what he fucking became. And the bedwetting, of course, did not help. And we've talked about that before with other killers we've discussed. Now, Pavel would testify during his trial about the bedwetting and about his father and that he was just, you know, thought he was lazy and he didn't want to get out of bed. Like, fuck you, Dad. I was asleep. I think I want to fucking wake up to fucking warm running down my fucking... Yeah, I mean, the dad dad was whipping his ass and telling him he was lazy and he just didn't want to go to the bathroom. So that's fucked up. Now how many times I've seen your pissed drunk ass sitting in the chair and piss yourself? Fuck you. (laughs) (laughs) Mr. Leahy. Uh, But it seemed like something, you know, was going to have a huge impact on him. I mean, how could it not? I mean, this is horrible. I'm sure his attorneys, of course, doing everything they can, you know, to build some sort of defense and and explain some of this shit. But I don't think it's going to do any good. But we'll get to that later on. But, uh, you know. He definitely had some fucking anger issues. And he's also known to be a peeping Tom at a young age. I mean, what else Why is he going to do, right? He can't get anybody to fucking... Can't get no leg. I'm going to go... Sh- I mean, if he's <laughs> soaked... this in, shit out. Like I mean, if he's literally soaked <laughs> in piss, <laughs> right. I'm thinking he's not going to get very many date offers, you know? Nah. So, nah. pretty nasty. And uh, they would, you know... Uh, his sexual urge is becoming more perverse, of course, at a young age. He's got this, what they would call paraphilia. Um, also suffering from impotence, even in his teens. And we've seen this before with other killers. Interestingly enough, he's in the killer cage tonight. Andre Chikatilo. Chikatilo. So, Chris, he would say that his dad would just call him piss or scum. <laughs> hey. Hey, hey, piss, get the fuck out of here. I, yeah, right. I can't even fucking goddamn help what's going on. You're blaming me. Plus, you're just going to call me piss? You're going to call me skunk? That's so like, fuck Fuck you, dad. I don't even fucking like this motherfucker should have just ran away, dude. Like, for real. I bet in Polish it sounds even more ruthless. Dude. Oh, my did God. They, I bet did it Did they does. get, like, for his bike, you know how you get the license? Oh my god, the little fucking plate with plate your name on it, but says piss. piss. <laughs> but yeah, oh, dude, he's a fucking teenager and shit, like going to school smelling like smell like piss. Fucking this, all the fucking kids would just call him stinks and shit. Like, it's fucking like, horrible, like, like, man. I can't even fucking imagine, dude, what that would be like. Fucking, I know, we're laughing, like, but it's so funny. <laughs> dude. And your parents don't even let you get cleaned up. They're just like, no, fuck you. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. Go to school. Smell like piss. So, thankfully, he turns 18 and puts the pee thing away. So, that's good. But Pavel, I'm an adult now, Dad. Right. I'm going to do, do adult stuff, Dad. 
He I does don't his, piss myself now. <laughs> he does this mandatory military service, which is common back in the day, especially in that area. Um, and today it's still a thing in a lot of countries. I personally think it's a good idea for everybody to go through two or three years in the military. Of course, me being former military would say something like that. Right, right. Now, in today's world, where kids don't have a fucking clue... I couldn't even imagine most of these kids I interact with dealing with the drill sergeants I dealt with. They would fucking cry, dude. Oh, my God. It would be a shit show. So maybe it's better it's not that way. I don't know. You hurt my feelings. Yeah. Uh, now, Joey. Go watch the beginning of motherfucking Full Metal Jacket. <laughs> that's for sure. But he only asked, lasts a few months. Joey doesn't make it too far. No, they kicked him out. They said it was issues with his his ears and his hearing and shit. But right, who knows what the fuck that motherfucker did, or they found out about him, you know, <laughs> Peeing. that they didn't disclose. I mean, it's the same situation because, like, like legitimately, like when we talk about like Chickatillo and this dude, like in the Communist Party, saying that it was impossible in their mind for there to be a serial killer in their area. So. That being said, if they're going to cover up something like that and Chickatillo with fucking 50 motherfuckers dead or whatever, then the the thought that this guy in the military or who knows numerous how many others right. that they found out, hey, this is some weird ass shit. Or, right, there's or something wrong with this guy. Did, we did some bogus shit. And right. they're just like, okay, discharge gone. We're done with it, but nothing was ever recorded. You know? It's very possible, you know. I mean, they're not going to give up any yeah. of that kind of shit. Or he could have just had bad hearing. Yeah, he could have. I mean, there were plenty <laughs> of guys that got kicked out in basic for random shit like that, you know, that didn't get Flat picked foot. up for whatever reason. Flat foot, yeah. right? <laughs> they are thorough, though, on the exam coming in, but, you know, sometimes something doesn't pop up till later. But yeah, they right, think right. people could use that, though, knowing they could just be like, oh, yeah. Oh, and they know when you're trying to get when out, you're and that's when it. they yeah, make yeah. it worse. Yeah. So he moves to Gdansk and gets himself a job as a truck driver. Got married. Um, also, is working he found a chick that loves golden showers. <laughs> 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 and uh, he becomes an electrician. So I mean, he's doing some shit, getting his shit together, kinda. Uh, getting in some trouble though. 1976 to 79, he's doing some short bits in jail. Or prison, he ends up getting divorced, but then remarries, has two kids with her. Um, the neighbors would say he was a quiet guy, kind of kept to himself, but his sexual fantasies are getting out of fucking control. Yeah. And he did not have the ability to control himself because that part of his brain he just didn't was just it. shut off. It just it, didn't work, you know? Just gone. This dude, and this dude loved being a thief too yeah he did he did that and that's a common one you know yeah. we've talked about so many times right like get caught stealing some stupid shit yeah like a vice or something yeah, like that exactly uh <laughs> now chris he was having some issues with his sex drive and also yeah. he liked enjoying the fucking, exposing himself pull his dick out and shit dude and like it, like like the straight up like Fucking trench coat type shit, right, dude. Yeah, just like, like fucking, old school. What up? <laughs> <laughs> fucking, he be doing this shit all the time, and those fucking, at least one time, he's fucking runs up on these chicks. Fucking, he just like, but ah, what up? And they just fucking laughing, like, what the fuck? You ain't got shit going on, son. Yeah, <laughs> just get the fuck out of here. Ass, like, get the fuck out of here. Huh? <laughs> he's like, so, yeah. how do you think that made him feel? He's like, oh man. No, I'm gonna piss on you. I mean, after he got the piss thing under control, you know, yeah. he just he couldn't stop. He just had to start waving his fucking hey, cock man, around. He, I don't know what's going. Throwing spider webs and shit. <laughs> So, Joey's got this construction job where he's in charge of handing out tools. What uh, What's going on here with the his uh, his sudden love? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> well, he goes around all these job sites and stuff, and he's the one that, you know, gets everybody what they need, the tools and all that. And, right. You know, he's basically the one that, that keeps inventory of all that, I suppose. And it's communist that's shit. Where you got to sign in and out yeah. for your hammer. Yep. So that's where he just starts to grab the fucking uh, the hammers for himself. Right. Because that's what he wants to use to, uh, to start a little bit of action. Right. Yeah, he starts, he figures out that, you know, a hammer is easy to conceal. 
you know, he can get away with maybe stealing one here or there, you know, that sort yeah. of thing. And, you know, we know a hammer is fucking up close and personal, so that's oh, some yeah, pretty hard shit. Into you know? it. Yeah, it's almost and, almost like strangulation. Almost. And the, this motherfucker, like, so he, like, got used to the hammer and shit, uh, traveling with it or whatever, so he could have it on him when it was opportune and shit, but he liked to keep it in his waist and shit, but the hammer would be cold down by his dick. Yeah. Right? So he started wrap. He would wrap yeah, a cloth yeah. around it right? <laughs> to keep to it keep warm. Himself warm. Yeah, I thought that was yeah. funny too. <laughs> Thinking though, it's like it made my belly cold. <laughs> yeah, see, he needs he needs to like take that idea and then mass produce those for it, other killers that want to Etsy. keep their hammer down by their cock. Yeah, you know, I right? Mean, <laughs> I mean, it's 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 a good business venture. So, but no, he doesn't. He doesn't go into the business venture, um, and you know, I just find it funny that like they made it like it was such a big deal to get a hammer. I mean, that had to be such a fucking rough existence. That's what I'm saying. That dude. having a hammer was like some sort of like, wow, how did he get a hammer? Like, it's like I gotta go to really? work. Like, like, what I just the fuck? To, I lost my hammer. Can I go to the store and get another one? No, no. You're going to reprimand me for losing that one. Yeah. I mean, I guess they like ration them. I don't know, but I mean, it's crazy. But later on, we're going to talk about why it actually comes in, you know, pretty important how they ration. Them. That's right. That's right. So they've got nine victims attributed to this guy, and they dubbed him the Scorpion. Uh, definitely cool name. And it was the way he struck his victims like a scorpion would sting. He used, of course, the hammer. That's his fucking so, tail. There you go. So that that is a cool fucking nickname. Like you said, Joey, I can't believe it. And at least get a little love for the cool Fuck, nickname, yeah. you know. The movie, the scorpion. <laughs> uh, his victims were all females, ages 18 to 35. The first murder was in 1979, uh, last one in 1983, uh, Tuchlin would refer to it as hunting, which, you know... Like Robert fucking Hansen? Very much, <laughs> yeah. I mean, very similar to that. Um, he would typically approach the female, ask for sex. Of course, they'd say, fuck you. Um, and then he drags him out of sight, brutally attacks, kills him with the hammer. And then after death, I don't think he did this in all the victims, but he finger would... blasting these motherfuckers. Yeah, he would undress them and then sometimes put his fingers inside of them and, you know, I, masturbate, th- jerk and all. I mean, what I the think fuck? I saw somewhere that he would, like, jerk off of them and, like, pretty much nut on them as they were dying and shit. Oh, my God. Yeah, I, I didn't see that, but wow. I'd that's be fucked. Fu- could you imagine that being your fucking last fucking thing you ever saw in your life? Was no. The person who just killed you and I was just staring at you busting a nut on your face yeah that's <laughs> <laughs> thanks for that visual you're Chris. welcome bro Jesus. <laughs> uh so it looks like there was one victim in 79 but the bulk of them were in 1980 uh he started getting good at it and was able to avoid being captured by attacking women in these kind of remote places and as a kid, they said that he witnessed hammer anesthesia, is what they called it, with farmers knocking out animals with a hammer to the head. That's what his, yeah, because the pigs on the farm is fucking dead. Right. Fucking blast them. Yeah. That was before the bolt action air. Right. Air thing. That's true. Now, Chris, it's amazing uh, that during the first murder of that 18-year-old... He should have got caught. He lost the hammer, man. Yeah, he lost the hammer in the fucking uh, Radunia River. Is that how you pronounce that? Redunia? I think so, Redunia, yeah. Yeah, but like, because he was like thinking crossing the river and lose his tracks or whatever, but he like almost, he, had, he almost drowned, didn't he? I believe yeah. so, yeah. Yeah, but he fucking lost the hammer and shit, but yeah, he, he eventually gets another one. Yeah. yeah, this hammer was fucking had a label on it, though, said fucking uh, rolling, rolling paper stock works and uh I'll put stock in that company. Yeah, I thought maybe Joey. I thought that sounded like a company Joey could work for, you know. I need that company. (laughs) (laughs) So there's at least one victim that he abducts from inside her home. Then he puts her in a van. So there you go, another one with the van. Uh, But a stolen van takes her out to the country where he tags her like the others. But I also saw that there was pig feces in the van that would eventually lead them to Tuchlin's farm. 
Um, it's some good police work. He and w- that's because... He fucking stole his neighbor's pigs. It was right. He was going. He was going out hunting one day. While he was going out there, he fucking sees these pigs in his neighbor's house. He's like, "Fuck that! I want those." Damn. So he fucking takes them, brings them back to his house, puts them in a gate, and then goes back out hunting. Right. So now he has these pigs. But yeah, then they found the pig shit yeah it's like I mean, pretty man. pretty cool police work here it's like rex yeah. mcelroy i'm coming to steal your cows <laughs> <laughs> so there's another victim where he got tired during the attack so he stopped <laughs> how hard of an attack are you doing you're like ate a snack a break, while bro. she laid there dying and which reminds of, me of nico clo with the eating cookies while right, that dude right. and bled again, out. what he ate was out of like her purse or whatever it was her food that right he was yeah that's She's even like, more fucked up I don't know. Watch him eat your food or get nutted in the face. (laughs) Both equally not good. Right. Um, So, Joey, I mean, pretty convenient clue leaving that hammer behind, dude. Yeah, and that's, I mean, it took him a while because, you know, they had to look into it, but that's what we say. He was the guy that fucking signed these hammers out and everything. So, A, he's the dude that had access to all of them. Right. B, I'm pretty sure that there was they had a log so they could see if anybody had not checked theirs back in. Right. Otherwise they could have just went to that person, you know. Right, but they did but, say that the record keeping was really bad at the place and they didn't even have right. a complete record of him and he was only not, not there to for mention, a couple of weeks. Would, yeah, and not to mention as far as like signing in and out fucking hammers. He could have just took one that fucking, you know... Somebody else had signed was in. was never signed out. Yeah. That's fucking, true. Who knows? Yeah, they, they he brought... He was the one it. that fucking did all that shit. Yeah, it would be easy for him to get around that, for sure. Um, so, he dodges the bullet there. He could have got caught, but the, the record-keeping wasn't that good. Uh, the hammer, though, as we mentioned, wrapped in bandages, which is kind of funny. Um, but the fact that he avoided capture, I mean, until 83, like you said, Chris, eight years... Uh, but after the police uh, were sure there's a serial killer at work, and the M.O. is the same with these fucking hammers to the head, Hammer. I mean, it's just amazing that they didn't get him sooner. I mean, you don't have just nine dudes randomly walking around the same town like, I'm right. just going to randomly beat one bitch with a hammer. No, that yeah. don't happen. But like we were saying, you know, this is a communist country. There's a lot of shit going mm-hmm. on. Martial law is in place. Um, they, well, and... and- Another thing is that there, there's a serial killer going around, and the people that live there, they know about it, but they don't talk about it because we said about the communist deal. So one of his victims, I can't remember, it was one of the, one of the last ones, but he left that body right outside the communist party. Uh, oh yeah, whatever. The, the, their fucking you know main base or whatever. Right. So by that being there, they had to face the fact and admit like, yup, we have a murder because now the townspeople are like, well, right. who did that? Because right. we want to know. Right. And it's probably linked to these other ones because it's the same mo. So that was a big push to uh to get it more into the public eye and in the media, I think. Yeah, and that's probably what pressured him to start the task force named Special Group Scorpion. <laughs> Special Group. <laughs> okay. Uh, His the, nickname is pretty cool. That's kind of a not a good name for right. a task force. Yeah, so, that I mean, is kind of funny. <laughs> uh, this country is in chaos. Martial law, like I was saying, moving away from communism but still were communists at the time. And like we were saying with the Hart brothers, they kind of preyed upon the chaos. You know, they they did what they did because there was so much other shit going on. They got away with it. Now, Tuklin fucked up, and one of the victims is able to provide the... She survives yeah. and provides a f- task force with a good description. Pretty good artist sketch of him and shit. Yeah, they put that out, but nothing comes back. And what happened with her, though? That shit was crazy. He takes her out to go fucking, you know, he's got her in the van or whatever. Right. He gets the van stuck in the mud. Oh, that's right. Can't fucking get it, get it and drive. Says, fuck he it, just grabs her, her and assaults her anyway. Leaves her out there in the woods, leaves the fucking stolen stupid. van and fucking bounces. Yeah, yeah, just fucking stupid, man. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, this guy is is just, you know, he's off the fucking charts, just just dumb, you know. Um, so, yeah, they, they also get some good boot prints at the crime scenes. And then, like you said, with the tire tracks, 
Um, and they figure out that the tire tracks are the same where these piglets were stolen. So they put two and two together, and a female clerk at the police station is the one that figured out, hey, I think this guy that stole the piglets is the scorpion. So, so fuck yeah to her for doing that. Yeah, yeah. And Chris, May 1937, they end up out there at the old Tuklin farm. Uh, yeah. The same, he thought they were out there because of the pig theft, but not because of the piglets. It was this pig gruel or whatever steamer. I don't know what the fuck a pig <laughs> yeah. steamer is, whatever. <laughs> Something to cook pigs in, I guess. I, so. I guess, but Jesus Christ. Big hog smoker. Yeah, right? I, I'll go with that. Go with that, but uh, yeah. But they go out there and he thinks it's all about that and they fucking find right. a goddamn hammer in his fucking car and shit. And it was wrapped up in the fucking claws like right. fucking... And, well, oh, what do you know? There might be some blood on there. Yeah, real smart. Maybe man. some blood on there. Jesus. But uh, uh, they also find uh, all the rings and the watches and all his trophies and shit. And they right. fucking uh, get it. They put him in cuffs and he's like, let's yeah. go. 37 years old at the time. Dude. Could you imagine 37 years old and you got nine kills on you? Right. Fuck and, yeah. And looking at probably getting a 22 to the back of the head here in a, in a few uh, minutes. Uh, yeah. Uh, so he would claim that he didn't know he killed anyone. He said they were still warm when he left the scene, which is <laughs> fucked up. Yeah, because you, oh, I just beat the shit out of him. I, I just didn't kill it him, on dude. that one. Yeah, um, I, I was just like, oh, look at that blood. Uh, it would come out that he really didn't want to kill the victim, but wanted the sexual gratification. And the cops take him to the scenes like you see sometimes they do. And of course, he's fucking loving this shit, uh, reenacting these scenes. And then there was like making these women feel all weird. The female cop, he asked her to, I would do better if I had her, you know. Oh, yeah, dude. And I'm sure she was like, get the Are fuck away from crazy? me. Like, oh, my God. So, yeah, he was creeping everybody out no matter where he was he's just creeping people and they out actually, the fact that they actually let him like with the even with the fake hammer and shit like, yeah with the you dummy. still let him who else was it that reenacted their shit oh we've done there's been quite a few of them that have done it you know and it's it is uh definitely giving That's them fucking what they nuts, want so you're yeah. actually did watching they... what they did i mean that right it's like brutal what were you gonna say joey uh, I, was, I was trying to remember if Vince Lee, if that was one. I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure about old Vince Lee. If he reenacted, I can't remember. Um, but he would claim that he didn't, you know, know he killed anybody. So that that's his story, I guess, and he's sticking to it. And so, Joey, they end up putting him in a mental institution for an evaluation. So how does that go? Uh, they... I mean, <laughs> He's he's pretty fucking out there. He's pretty wild, Dude. but uh, <laughs> this is great. He's still gonna, he, yeah, he's still gonna face the fucking court. But anyway, while he's in there, though, he fucking definitely uh, <laughs> learns a few things. He learns about how to be an artist. He likes to to make bread sculptures. <laughs> bread yeah. sculpture. How uh, fucking that, random like, what that the is. Fuck? <laughs> but you know, he he finds his inner self. I guess the artistic. That's interesting, though. A lot of inmates that you know find that in art i mean joey i i know you're obviously an artist but um you know what is oh, yeah, it about exactly. it you think it just they got all that time and they <laughs> time <laughs> but <laughs> yeah uh it, to be honest like it, if i could say one good thing about me going to prison is that you know i did so much art while i was in there that it fucking elevated me way past oh, wow. where i would have been at that time in my life if i had just been out on the street in the world probably yeah 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 so that was cool and then i came out of it um more gung-ho about it than probably where i would have been so i think that's pretty cool yeah that is. i cool. never made no bread sculptures i think you know <laughs> he probably he might have used his cum to fucking yeah you know, well he gets a little sculpt those gets a little fucking out there with this here. so he decides to take this a bit further I mean, bread sculpting is kind of boring oh this is the best so i mean you got a guy that's locked up right for six months in a hospital under observation i mean what else he got to do so he discovers <laughs> that if he could mold the bread into any formation by using his saliva that's fucking gross dude and then i just, know he ends up making three bread vaginas yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, like the soup bowl at fucking Cracker Barrel kind of shit. Like, like I don't that, know. It's like, fucking it's crazy. Fucked up. It even made them look realistic with pubic hair. I mean, yeah, I'm not drinking no fucking soup fuck? out of that. <laughs> I mean, fuck seriously, that. man. I mean, Chris, have you ever made a vagina I out am, of bread? I I have fucked a piece of bread once in my life. I was totally fully. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what the fuck? And is a you know, vagina that, made of bread more susceptible? It's going to get a yeast infection. infection. I mean. I, I'm sure other people have fucking said the same thing. But as soon as I saw, I was like, yeast infection. Yep. <laughs> like yep. instantly yeah. popped yeah. into my exactly. head. Exactly. <laughs> it's so fucked up. Joey, I don't know if you've ever made a uh, vagina out of a bread before. Man, I've I've made vaginas and drawn vaginas and all kinds of shit, but never out of bread. Yeah, I mean, that's a first. I mean, what a skill. What a skill. So I looked for pictures on the internet of his bread sculptures. Bro, I wish you could have found I didn't did even think about looking for any, that. Did not find any. Uh, but wouldn't that be awesome to get one of his bread vaginas here at Murder Mental Mayhem? Uh, that would be awesome. Yeah. Anybody got a hold of that? But uh, dude, you know. wasn't a psychiatrist like this dude's out here fucking up women? And didn't they give him a female psychiatrist and shit? Yeah, too? and he was hitting on her yeah, and freaking like, her out. Uh, why would you fucking do that, man? Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure if he made her one of those bread vaginas or I not. Think you know, but, so. <laughs> But they yeah. might they might also just thought that he would open up to her a lot more than he would because, maybe to like a man. I mean, how many women could say that their man got him a bread gina? Do you I mean, think really? maybe when the man in one of their closed <laughs> sessions, like she, she showed him her vagina and one of the fucking sculptures was her vagina? It's very possible. It's very possible. So the doctor. I wonder if Panera has bread vaginas. For <laughs> should call him and ask him. <laughs> I'm doing a survey. Um, I, a doctor would end. The doctor would end up having a mental breakdown over his advances and shit. So it freaked her out, and uh, uh, yeah. he told her that if if he was let out, he would be on the hunt. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. go hunt. Oh yeah. So yep. so Chris Tuplin would confess to ten murders and eleven attempted murders. Um, yeah, but. he's uh, told the what did he tell the cops like, ah, it just made me feel better about life, basically. Like no, yeah. like whatever. Yeah, man. Probably because like because he smelled like piss his whole fucking childhood and teenage years. Right. All fucking women, just females, just like get the fuck away from me. So now he's right. not smelling like piss. Now he's just smelling like. Pig shit, and he's just weird because he was so socially outcast yeah. as a kid. So I mean, it's so he's just like it's fuck fucked these up, bitches. but that's that's what made him what he was. So awkward, um, but you know, I'm sure that's why he lashed out at women because he was pretty fucking frustrated. I mean, there's another one too. The mom, I mean, his mom and dad were both there, but mom was still abusive as well. Like, right. and, and I guess motherfucking Gein's mom was too nurturing. <laughs> yeah, some of the overbearing mom type thing. So, what do you think about it, Joey, with him, uh, you know, with the, obviously, victims being women because of his anger yeah, toward women I mean, over how they snubbed him all his life? Yeah, he, he did what he was doing for a pretty specific reason on his own personal front. Right. And not, not specifically because he wanted to kill people. Like you were saying, I don't think he really killing them wasn't the his his fun part. He didn't play with the fucking gore or nothing like that. Just the vagina. Right? He, he just he just wanted to get them dead as quick as possible because nobody wanted to be around him anyway. So he needed to have a dead body to be with to do what he wanted to do with it. Right. And I think it's crazy. You know the I I didn't see the specifics, but I can only gather that. He confessed to 10 murders and then the 11 attempted murders. He got found guilty for nine. And I'm thinking that maybe that last girl that got away that he had left with the van, that he probably just assumed that he killed her. Yeah, I'm he sure he like, did. Oh, yeah, I got, that was my 10th kill. And then he probably found out later that, nope, she was alive. So that's why he got attempted on that. Yeah, one. I'm not sure about that, uh, to be honest <coughs> with you. I'm not sure why they only got him on nine of the 10. I'm not sure. He's like, motherfucker, I lost my double digit. Right, right. <laughs> Uh, now I got to order the new the new shirts now. <laughs> um, so yeah, he winds up, uh, you know, saying the confession was coerced. 
Um, and I'm not saying that's not the case, but, you know, seems like this guy was the guy. Um, but, you know, we've talked about doing a podcast on false confessions because that is a real thing. I don't think his was. I think he just said, yeah, yeah, I don't think so either. Oh, yeah. They all say that, you know, that the they yeah. did, they were pressured or whatever. Um, but I definitely would like to put that on our, our list for 2024 to eventually do that. I know we've talked about that since we started. That was one of the early uh, topics that we threw around and just right. never got to just, it. But I'd like to do it. Um, but, you know, in this case, I, I'm with you. I think he's full of shit. Uh, but it was a bench trial, so no jury, and a judge finds him guilty of nine of the ten murders and all 11 attempted murders. Uh, he gets a death sentence, no big surprise. Uh, yeah. Communist country until 1989. Uh, it was 1991 when Poland had their first democratic election. So, you know, if he's in a communist country, you know, they're not tolerating yeah. that shit. And as we've been saying, no. they don't want anybody don't, knowing about it. Yeah. They don't want people to think you don't that follow this our happens. Rules, you're out. Yeah, you're done. Uh, they would just rather put a bullet in your head than house and feed you, waste the fucking resources. They're like, I don't care if you did it or not. Fuck we found you. you guilty. Done. Yeah, so... Chris, they find him guilty, of course, August of 85. Yeah, and they put him to death in May of fucking 87. Yeah, less that, than two that, years That later. motherfucker didn't get two whole years. It's just yeah. like, all right, brother. Yeah, I mean, they let him we appeal it. Out. They let him appeal it. Yeah. They got denied, and then it was like, okay, now you're but, now you're done. Yeah. Dude, that's a, that's a fast-ass appeal. Less than two years. Hey. He got an appeal and death sentence in less than two years. Sounds Fuck. like a plan. Sounds like a plan. Um, but then, Joey, what was the deal with him being beheaded after his death? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, they took his head and they put it in the uh, Form 1 jar. But supposedly, you know, I don't know where they had it kept at, but it ended up missing. Yeah, this dude's head just in a jar somewhere. It is. Yeah. yeah, so either somebody high up has his head or it just ended up, you know, destroyed. Or, yeah, it might have been probably just you know, destroyed. It, 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 if you're really fucking wild, you might think that something else happened with it, like Abby Normal. Right. And they put his head on a body, like fucking Young Frank. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a fucking pa a Pavel fucking monster running around. Dude. I didn't know if you had it as like an ottoman there at the uh, 419, Joey, <laughs> you know. That'd be pretty sick. Nico Klopp, right? He probably got that motherfucker. Probably. That's true. That's true. <laughs> or uh, William Harder, one of the two, right? Yeah. So yeah, that uh, ends up missing. Kind of interesting, uh, but I it'd be cool to have it here. You know, if we get all yeah. of that. Um, but I read in a book when his body was buried, the guys who dug the grave pissed on his coffin. I wonder if they did that as a diss or like no. a salute. No, I was just like, gonna say he was like, fucking, "Thank you." Yeah, I mean, <laughs> what, what, same seems pretty redundant. It, it really yeah, does. Well, I yeah, mean, to to send him out soaked in piss. I mean, like you not? came in soaked in piss, you're yeah. going out soaked in like, piss. He's <laughs> like, I already smell like piss. <laughs> yeah, thanks, motherfucker. Now this coffin's gonna stink. <laughs> So yeah, I mean that's that's a, that's a pretty wild story, but you know whatever. Anything to add to this one, guys? Old Pavel Tuklin. Uh, I don't think I got anything, dude. Yeah, it was a good one. I I enjoyed this one. I always love doing yeah. the obscure ones, and this one is definitely interesting with the bread vaginas and all that stuff. Uh, definitely hear some uh, commercials in there somewhere. You know, like oh, Pavel's yeah. cooking or something yeah. like that, a cooking channel, dude. I there are so many fucking goddamn opportunities <laughs> with that guy. Uh, put him on Iron Chef or some shit. Uh, I did my <laughs> research on this one by watching that episode of World's Most Evil Killers that I mentioned. Um, there was also a good one by Sky Vision that I found on YouTube. Uh, also read a few articles on Murderpedia as well as some things on Wikipedia. Uh, there's not a ton out there, as Joey mentioned, but no. uh, I'm going to put this on YouTube. Uh, uh, next week uh, or sooner so so it'll be on there and people will have this as a resource about Pavel Tuklin to check out um, so yeah if you're interested there is some stuff but not a lot now next week we're going to be off for Christmas uh, but we're not going to leave you guys stranded 
because we're going to give you a good bonus episode, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in the Mayhem segment, but you don't want to miss it. Uh, so it'll be Chris, the week of Christmas. We're off, and uh, we get a bonus episode. The week after that, you're going to get the big fight with all the craziness. Oh, gonna, yeah, dude. Before that's Before and sweet. after, it's going to be really great. So you got some good content coming up. So have no fear. We'll be back. But, Joey, any page a day for us? I got a couple. Uh, so, page a day, wrapping out the year yeah. on this shit. Yeah, but yeah. What a year. Pretty soon. Page but, a day. But I got the new one, so that's cool. But anyway, okay, so, Evelyn Hernandez, uh, pregnant woman. She vanished under pretty wild circumstances. Evelyn Hernandez and her five-year-old son, Alex, went missing on May 1st, 2002. And not long after she told her boyfriend, or this was not long after she told her boyfriend, Herman Aguilera, that she was pregnant. So Hernandez, she felt that Aguilera was pulling away from her after she announced that she was expecting. Uh, She called his mother to ask if there was anything wrong. And that's when his mom told her that he was actually already married. Oh, shit. on, On July 24th, um... Evelyn Hernandez's torso and legs were found floating in the San Francisco Bay underneath the Bay Bridge. Herman Aguilera, he fucking lawyered up. His wife stood by his side. Uh, The police stated that he was not a suspect and they were following other leads. Now, what's crazy about this is because basically the case didn't go anywhere. Right after this happened, the Lacey Peterson case did happen. Uh. Now... Lacey Peterson case, the San Francisco Chronicle ran her story 32 times, including four on the front page. And the lead in Evelyn Hernandez's case was only mentioned in the same paper about four yeah, times. Yeah, yeah, because it was class, yep. class and uh, shit. It was, yeah. it was never on the front page. So, you know, it's kind of sad that, you know, it's a possibility there could have been a, a more of a, you know look into this right because right, it's so multiple yeah what whatever happened to evelyn hernandez and her son alex and the unborn baby it all remains a mystery they just found her torso and legs and that was it wow henry aguilera free man so that was crazy um this one's uh pretty classic uh this is names like people's names and what they're associated with with crimes and shit so the name Jeremy is the most is the name that's most associated with driving related crimes. So what? if you know a Jeremy, Wait, that motherfucker sucks. Yeah, that's yeah. fucked up. So if you know one that sucks at driving, that's why. <laughs> uh, the names Harold and Russell; those are some of the most names for murderers. People named that are likely to murder wow. Harold and Russell. Um, I mean Wayne. If you know anybody named Wayne, that motherfucker is liable to have a parole violation, oh. miss court dates. So that's that's what he does. Michael, uh, don't be Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> uh, women named Tiffany are most likely to commit fraud. So <laughs> Tiffany's a fraud. All right, all right. <laughs> that's fucking. And crazy. the last, <laughs> and the last one they got is Randy. Randy is the most common name of criminals in Wyoming, Mississippi, and Louisiana. Wow. God damn. That's some, that's some fucking right. useless information to know. <laughs> that is. That is. I was like, what the fuck? All right. So, uh, now, I do have one more. Now, Norm, I ain't going to lie. I jumped ahead. This is really in the future. But... It's for Thursday, and Thursday is when this episode drops. So oh, I, yeah, I, I had to fucking, yeah. yeah, I had to read this one. It's because, the last of the year, right? And Thursday, what do you know? What is the anniversary of Chris? Nope. Okay, so December twenty first, nineteen thirty three. The Twenty First Amendment was ratified, ending a thirteen-year prohibition oh, wow. of alcohol oh. in the U.S. Oh man, so, that ought to be like fucking parte <laughs> at the nation. <laughs> so the Twenty First Amendment functioned to reverse the Eighteenth Amendment, which outlawed the manufacture, sale, and transportation of intoxicating liquors for beverage purposes. 
And it went into effect on January 17, 1920, one year and one day after it was signed. Now, the Volstead Act, also signed in 1919, allowed for the enforcement of prohibition and the creation of a prohibition unit of the Treasury Department. So the union, or I'm sorry, the union, the unit, the, the prohibition unit was largely ineffective because organized crime flourished oh, yeah. under prohibition. Large-scale bootleggers like Al Capone built empires while the U.S. government lost billions in tax <laughs> revenue. Right. So plus, plus the cost of running the prohibition unit itself. It costs right. so much Popular, money. Yeah, popular support of prohibition waned in the early 1930s. Still, some states continue to prohibit the sale of alcohol after 1933, and the last state to end statewide prohibition was Mississippi in 1966. God wow. damn. So, damn. That's your history lesson on prohibition, Chris. That was page a day for this Page a day. Nice. Hell page yeah. Page a fucking day. Good stuff. All right, well, we have done our fair share of murdering tonight. I think it's time to crank up that heavy metal. So, Joey, what the hell are we going to do? We're going to talk about some albums we liked in 2023, y'all. Fuck yeah. Just because CK has passed on, he's not done educating the masses. CK will forever be the great metal motherfucker. We're here to stomp poser ass and eradicate the planet of their kind. CK has passed the torch to us, and we will forge the fuck on. In CK's name, we will bestow metal knowledge upon all of you. All right. Uh, CK. The great metal motherfucker forever. This episode or this segment of the show will be dedicated to him. He's there in the background throwing up the horns with the Santa hat on. Our friend Chris Kovac, CK, that passed now a couple years ago. And I know he would like that we keep doing this and we pass the horns every week and take turns. And this oh, yeah. week, doing something it's the a last different. Ep- yeah, last episode of the year, we've been doing these top 10 or whatever, however many, you know, we want to throw at you albums of the year. This is such a good year for metal. It's fucking unbelievable. So, Chris, you wanted to throw in just a few yeah, that I you just, wanted to I just point got out. a couple that I just want to say, obviously, because yeah. everybody knows a couple of them. But fucking Make Them Beg for Death, the new Dying Fetus is fucking yeah. just nasty as fuck. You can't go wrong with that. <laughs> no. Uh, agreed, fuck, agreed. Uh, and fucking uh, Terrorist Sight, the new candle, uh, Cattle Decapitation. Fucking love that one. It's heavy as shit, like always. And then one that just came out this month that I fucking listen to and it's fucking awesome it's fucking echoes across the hellscape the new polka dot cadaver dude because it's polka dot cadaver oh, shit. I didn't it's that. fucking awesome, yeah it's fucking dope that's cool. so yeah i mean that's pretty much all i got i, I know like I just, it's hard for me to go through and be like yes yes but yeah i get it that's fine all right well, I'm I'm eating a pop tart, so I'm in the middle of chewing. You guys, that's a tradition. Gotta eat and Joey, Pop-Tarts. unfortunately, is out of pop tarts over there. So we're I'll eating. email you a couple, yeah. bro. <laughs> yeah. no, it's bullshit. It's because I'm a pothead and forgot to grab them at the store <laughs> right before the podcast when I specifically went there for them. That's fucked up, that's dude. Right. <laughs> Walked out there with things that you didn't go to get all the time. <laughs> All right, well, my albums, the way I did this is I kept the big bands out of mine. So oh, okay. I okay. didn't mention Dying Fetus, which right. I love. Right, right. Cannibal Corpse. I like the new one. There's some good. Oh, yeah. But I kept them out. I kept it more to the indie stuff, all right? So number 10, uh, and, and several of these bands, I guarantee you, a lot of listeners are going to be like, who is that? Executus. Uh, the Black Throne of Chaos Abandoned, fucking amazing from Australia, like a black and thrash type thing. Really, really killer. Number nine, Withering Scorn, Prophets of Demise. That's the Glenn and Sean Drovers project with Joe DeBias right on. Um, from Fate's War, X Fate's Warning. Fucking incredible. Uh, number eight, War Crab. Uh, the Howling Silence, a great UK band I really like. Kind of a doom death thing. 
Um, number 70, Radicated, fucking unbelievable uh, album they came out with. Young guys uh, called Descendants. They're from Sweden, really good thrash metal. Uh, Leper Colony, a self-titled, unbelievable, uh, Germany and Sweden, uh, different musicians. Uh, really, really good old school death metal, just killer. Yeah, that's a good album. And it's really that. good. Uh, the singer for that is also the singer in another band I'm going to talk about here in a second. Uh, Chronicle, uh, where Chaos Thrives from Denmark, a really good, another black and thrash band. Number four, Creeping Death, Boundless Domain, fucking brutal. Uh, really like that one, a U.S. band. Number three, As in Hell, Impy Aura. That is fucking amazing uh, death metal stuff from Denmark. That's the band that the singer for Leper Colony is also the singer for. He's also okay. the singer in Morgoth. He's also the singer in Insidious Disease. He's in like 10 different bands. Um, I'm going to interview him. He's a super cool guy. I contacted That's him. He's all about it. So, so yeah, that'll be cool. Uh, number two, Legion of the Dam. That's the band I featured last week, the Poison Chalice from the Netherlands. And my number one album, The Bleeding Monocrator. Fucking love it. Death Thrash is my wheelhouse, and these guys fucking do it. Uh, they're a UK band. Really, fucking really great. Owning it. So that's my list, Joey. What about you? All right, so... I do like that you kept out some of the bigger ones. I should have did that too, but I don't give a fuck. I'm just going to name fucking a bunch of different shit. Uh, it's funny because we talked about keeping it to a 10 or a 5 the last few years, and then I always fucking end up having <laughs> All right. So anyway, here we go. Um, a new one that popped up on the screen for me recently was Riphobia and their self-titled album. Yeah, uh, I saw that. I that love Maurice. that. I love that. Yeah. Them dudes are sick. Yeah. Fucking, like I said, kind of under the radar. All of a sudden, just popped up. Really good. Um, uh, nice honorable mention. I think they put out a good album this year. Overkill with Scorched. I yeah. thought that was a badass thrash album. Yep. Uh, out of New York, Afterbirth, in but not of. Fucking killer death metal album. Old school. Um, the Boys in Obituary came out with Dying of Everything, yeah, which yeah. was a killer album. Yep. Uh, Chris brought it up, Cannibal Corpse, Chaos Horrific. Um, Syphilic, my homie from Michigan, dropped his fucking new album, The Medication, last month. That shit's fucking too heavy. Uh, Crepitation, the boys from the United Kingdom. Monstrous Eruption of Impetuous Preposterity. <laughs> Preposterosity. I can never <laughs> wow. say that. Right. But uh, Crepitation, they fucking had a badass album this year. One of my favorites of this year, and I saw it on a lot of people among their tops, so I guess it was just a really good album, but Nithing with the album Agonal Hems from fucking, they dropped that on New Standard Elite, huge. Talked about Dying Fetus. Uh, my boys in Reap, Vaughn, Kyle Christman, yeah, all them, yeah. they just dropped the album Born From Plague, fucking awesome album. Fucking Death Grind with a fucking taste of that thrash riff in there. Uh, from Finland, the band Guts with their album Decay. Fucking sick. Uh, Molested Divinity, fucking also on New Standard Elite with their new album, The Primordial. Um, Gaffed, Die Already. It was an EP, uh, band out of New Jersey, but that shit is fucking heavy. G-A-F-F-E-D, Gaffed. Check that out. Hmm. They've been around for a while, but their new EP is killer. Um, one another one of my favorites of the year. I don't got really like what my favorite ones were. Right, Plus, right. I know I know I'm missing a bunch of fucking albums I really like because that always happens. But uh, another one that was definitely top fucking scale was a uh, cranium scriptures of fucking um, what is it? Vicanial defilement. Uh, I can't remember if that's exactly what it's called because I didn't write it down because I'm an idiot. But the new cranium album fucking killed it this year. Torso Fuck Postpartum Ecstasy uh, out of Finland. They fucking came out with that. And then this is my last one. And this is a mention because what surprised me about this album is that I didn't dislike it. I feel like for as old as these dudes are and for what they go fucking have gone through, that they fucking keep it true with this album. And that's Metallica with 72 seasons. That shit's pretty fucking dope. So 2023 fucking represent. 
I didn't yeah. mind that album either, and I thought I was going to hate it. I thought yeah, it. I, I thought it was pretty good. It. I've just been so sour on them for so long. It's just yeah, yeah. For it's just hard it, yeah. to friggin' even <laughs> say it, you know. Yeah, it's almost like painful to say it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, Chris, you got the horns for the first episode next year, so yes, you yes. got plenty of time to think on it. Yeah, I get. I'm I, like I said last week. I'm going to do a Necro Goblicon. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay. Very cool. Um, Which is fucked up. I said that, and then I seen a whole bunch of new news coming out about those guys. I'm like, oh, that's how funny. the fuck did that just happen? <laughs> they must have heard. Chris, I'm Murder Metal May. I mentioned it. Um, update on 666 Seconds of Metal. Uh, that's the YouTube channel. We've got one just for the metal stuff. Shane and I doing those episodes. We did one on Overthrow, uh, Ascension of the Entombed Review, which is a UK death metal band. And then Frozen Soul, a Glacial Domination Review, a Texas band. Um, we also are doing our top tens this week. So the one I just did here, be you know, going through that with him. And then we're taking a spin on the Lost Classic, and we're calling it Dissecting a Classic. And the first one we're going to do is Death Leprosy. So, All right, all so right, that'll on. be a good one. Uh, so like go subscribe to that YouTube channel. I'm telling you, you're going to dig it, and I'll link to it in the episode description. It's different than the Murder Metal Mayhem one. This is just the metal stuff. Um, and like I said, I had to break them apart only because it fucks the uh, algorithm up with YouTube where they don't know what audience to put the videos in front of because they're so different. Um, you know, you guys that listen to us know that's how we do it, but people that don't, you know, it's just like two different things and it's just weird. So that's how it had to be done. Uh, bands, if you're in a band, you want to get a hold of us, Pete at MurderMentalMayhem.com. Uh, you can get a hold of us that way. Or you could send uh, your stuff to Murder Metal Mayhem, P.O. Box 554, Hayworth, Illinois, 61745. Got some really good <laughs> stickers uh, in the mail from a New York fan. Chris. Oh, yeah, dude. Morg Mike. Yeah, Morg Mike. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I got uh, I got some stickers for the table and the door and stuff. I forgot to bring them out here tonight, but I'll make sure I have them out here for next time. That's cool. Uh, Joey, what's the latest on uh, Gormonger and your distro? Not a goddamn thing, because I need to get in and fucking start recording some shit. I do got a lot of stuff that's in the works. Yeah, but, but this time of year uh, is crazy for you, dude. I know, but yeah, I, I will get to some of that, so you guys will hear about it. But uh, one thing I do have is I do have a handful of politically correct metal bands. Oh, shit. I... That, I, that I wanted to share. Go uh, for it. Just a couple, but I thought they were pretty funny. I always fucking... I've only came up with these a couple times, and it's always whenever we say fuck it in the fucking segment, and then I'm like, well, hold on, I want to do it. (laughs) So, uh, the first one I did was Sexual Atrocities. All right. And for them, I would call them (laughs) (laughs) S.A. S.A., nice. That's basically it. Okay, so then you got (laughs) Anal Blast. Tushy explosion. Tushy explosion. I like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Dead Kennedys. Unalive political family. There you go. <laughs> Love it. Love it. And then my favorite and my last one. Cripple bastards. People with disabilities, but not fathers. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. Or fatherless. <laughs> that's <Yeah>. great <laughs> that's good stuff uh fuck yeah politically correct death metal I'm glad you did that <laughs> all right well the 666 club is a way you guys can support what we do it's our patreon just three dollars a month we appreciate all of you that already are patrons and and members of the 666 club so thank you you get stuff yes. early you get the interviews right when they're done. Don't discount on the shirt or something. Discounts on merch. We got two different shirts in the store. So if you're interested, go on our website, murdermentalmayhem.com. You can also join the 666 Club from the website. So you can go do that either way. Links in the episode description. <laughs> All right. Well, we have done plenty of metal tonight. So, Joey, what the fuck do we need to do? Let's uh, figure out what's happening in Mayhem tonight. Stuck in as I'm hiding from the light Got no reason to 
Are you tired of your girl having some nasty, stank-ass pussy? Something that smells like an animal died up in there? Well, fear no more. Thanks to Dr. Gein Vagina Maintenance, you can say goodbye to that graveyard-inspired rotten crotch forever. Yes, my wife's pussy smelled like ten motherfuckers died up there. But when I applied Dr. Gein Vagina Maintenance Cream, it smelled fresh and new. Give your wife our special Mother's Day Pussy Be New basket with a tube of the maintenance cream, a bottle of our special jizz absorbent powder to keep the cum crystals down, and a hand towel to wipe that fucker down. Thanks, Dr. Gein. Her pussy smells so good. I might just cut it off and put it in the shoebox with all the others. Well, uh, that's a topic for another day, son. Dr. Gein Vagina Maintenance. Buy some today for that rotten crotch pussy you love to hate. Oh my god. That rotten crotch pussy you love to hate. Wow. <laughs> 2019, the original Dr. Gein Vagina Maintenance commercial, Joey. That was great. And my son, Joe, in that one, too. So both Joey's there. Yep. That was good shit. And it's part of our hysterical, distasteful, and stupid Volume 1 album that you can get digitally from our website. So go buy it. $6.66. <clears throat> you got 45 oh. commercials uh, of stuff like that. Just really funny. Before that, Riffobia. Uh, which I absolutely love that album. It would have been in my top ten had I had it for a little bit longer. That song, God of Hate, those guys are killer. That whole album is like that. Really, really good stuff from Greece. Uh, really, really dig those guys, man. All right, well, we uh, we don't have any mayhem to share with you tonight, but we do have some funny uh, killer cage match wrestling stuff that we're going to get into here so we'll make up for it I promise um, all quick update 666 seconds of murder those are the ones that are really crushing it with the views um, we had one video hit 15,000 views in two days uh, so it's going crazy with Idaho 4 I mentioned I did one on Gacy I did Delphi Alex Murdoch uh, the Colorado Funeral Home with all the bodies stacked up. So there's some cool shit on there. So go check it out. I'll link to it in the episode description. All right, the Killer Cage Match. That's yes. a fun time. We get our listeners. We want to say thank you to once again, Chris. Once again, we have Daniel Ramirez, the cousin of fucking Richard. Right. <laughs> Sorry, Daniel. Can't help he it. might really have a cousin named Richard. <laughs> That'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and then we got Colin eight one five Posse Rogers. Hell yeah! And once again, Radio Silence, a band coming out. Where are they from? I'm not. They're up uh, in Illinois, Northern Illinois, uh, doing cover rock covers. It looks like so. Fuck yeah. yeah! Thank you guys. And speaking of eight one five Posse, he's going to be in here at the end of February for an episode yeah. with us. So that'll be fun. You guys will get to meet. Chris will get to meet him. Joey will see him via. Uh, uh, the yep. internet feed. Uh, we got one nasty matchup, though, in the cage, as Joey pointed out earlier. But, Joey, once again, who do we got fighting tonight in the cage? Andre Chikatilo, who we've uh, said his name a few times tonight. And then he's going to be going up against David Parker Ray. Yeah, the old toy box killer. Uh, and they got a couple of objects, Chris. Always makes uh, things fun, and uh, this is yeah. getting gonna, gonna get nuts. Yeah, they got a five gallon bucket of fucking some acid. Now is this like hallucinogenic acid? No, is like this battery acid like or something. Fucking like sulfuric that. acid. Yeah, something that's gonna eat flesh. Uh, okay, yeah. all right. Well, I mean, enough fucking LSD probably eat your flesh. But anyway, <laughs> fucking they got a five gallon bucket of acid, and then they got a fucking like a super soaker basically or a fucking pressure washer yeah that shoots high, pressure, pressure wa high pressure comb yeah high pressure semen um and then a five gallon bucket of acid that sounds like a good time and then joey what about the variable man uh pinhead from the hellraiser series and that's after he did two lines of coke off a lot lizard's ass oh wow <laughs> would he even do that i mean he looks kind of too dude 
for what fucking Pinhead's doing, this song seems about right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chris, what's the song playing? Got my fucking Snoop Diggy Dog fucking strolling down the street, smoking Indo, sipping on gin and juice. There you go. <laughs> so we got Andre Chikatilo up against David Parker Ray in a steel cage with a five-gallon bucket of battery acid and a gun that shoots high-pressure semen. And we got Pinhead in the cage after doing two lines of coke off a lot lizard's ass. Gin and juice jamming on the fucking 666,000 watt Murder Metal Mayhem Bose speaker system. So, Chris, what the fuck do we make of this? Okay. Oh, man. So... Andre Chikatilo and David Parker Ray, they're both self depraved motherfuckers, dude. Fucking, they get in there. Parker Ray is just like, you know, I like dudes too. You want me to get in there and suck your dick or something? He's like, my dick don't work, bro. He's like, no, I know how to fix that. Come to my house. So they fucking go to the goddamn house. They, they leave the cage together. They're just oh, like, wow. fuck this shit. They let him leave the cage. Yeah, they're, they're just like, we're out. We're going to get Like, Chikatilo's just like, if you think you can make my dick work, let's go. So he walks, they walk in. They walk into the toy box, and there's this chick there just bleeding part or fucking chickatillo instantly like dong fucking biggest boner. He's like, Can I do that too? It's like, hell yeah, you can. So fucking Snoop Dogg, he's fucking goddamn out there just bumping on the music and shit, getting it. And fucking uh Pinhead, he's higher than fuck kicking it with Snoop Dogg. He's like, dude, you got some of that chronic. I need to come down a little bit, bro. Right. Like, come on, man. So now Pinhead and fucking Snoop Dogg are fucking chilling. <laughs> uh, fucking David Parker Ray, the fucking Chickatilla are in there. They're like stabbing this bitch. Next thing you know, Parker Ray's like, I don't even like this dude. His st- dick still don't work. So he fucking just grabs the fucking bucket of goddamn acid, pours it on him. Meanwhile, he sprays that fucking cum all over the chick they got cut up. Snoop Dogg and Pinhead are like, nah, fuck that, dog. And fucking Snoop Dogg looks at Pinhead and he's like, hey, can you take care of this? He's like, I will show you pleasure. And I'm going to give it to Pinhead. And they just All the bump chains him. come yeah. flying out of the walls. Which, uh, I'm giving it to Pinhead and Snoop Dogg kicking it, smoking blunts. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Joey, <laughs> how about you, dude? <laughs> it's a wild one, man. Shawback I- coming up with some good shit there. I know, I like that he made Snoop Dogg come alive. And, yeah. That's uh, I cool. had to, dude. Did you, have you I ever got, seen the video? <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> you said Stephanie got me a Snoop on the shelf. Now, oh, you yeah, yeah, I saw shit. that. Yeah, yeah. And, oh, my God, that's ridiculous. <laughs> okay, so uh, on tonight's cage match, you know, I mean, first off, gin and juice bumping on our system. That's always going to be fucking banging. You know what's up. With fucking, so much drama uh, in the LBC. <laughs> I mean, do you drink gin and juice, Chris? I fucking do not. <laughs> no, no, that's just pretty gnarly. Like yeah. you gotta be pretty hardcore. Gin's fucking disgusting. It tastes like yeah. a fucking Christmas tree. Well, <laughs> it's that time of the year, so I guess gin and juice is the right no. thing to be drinking. Some martinis. So, yeah, I drink for vodka real. martinis. Now, David Parker Ray and Chickatillo. They basically are just fucking squaring up on each other and trying to fucking throw some dukes at first because they can't really figure out what the hell is going on. <laughs> right. Ch- Chickatillo is like, us, us, I'm the toss, I'm the toss, and whatever he says. <laughs> and fucking goddamn David Park Ray is like, speak English, motherfucker, goddamn. Speak right. English, you goddamn son bitch. And Chickatillo's like, I'm the toss, I'm the toss, I'm the And he's fucking freaking out and he's, he's fucking pissed because around. David. Dude. Well, I, there ain't no dick swinging because fucking he can't even get his dick out to fucking swing in the first place. <laughs> and fucking, dude, it is just goddamn ridiculous between goddamn David Parker Ray trying to figure out what the hell goddamn Chickatilla is saying, Chickatilla trying to figure out what he's saying, that fucking Hellraiser over in the corner is just goddamn like, look, motherfuckers, Doug Bradley's tired of this shit. He's like, I'm going to fucking show you guys, I'm going to show you guys the meaning of pleasure and pain now. 
Snoop Dogg bumping on the system, that's a good way to start. But this is where it fucking comes in. All of a sudden, Hellraiser fucking points his fingers and the fucking cum and the fucking battery acid fly up into the air and fucking shoot into the mouths of everybody and interconnect with a line of cum and battery acid flowing <laughs> through their mouth and nose oh, and wow. ears connected yeah, yeah. between chick and like a centipede type of thing going yeah on. and it's the fucking pleasure and pain fucking going through the the <laughs> the killer cage match while gin and juice is bumping and it's fucking catastrophic fucking insane atmospheric shit and hellraiser finally is like fuck this i just came down off that coke and this is boring me so he lets it all fall to the ground come battery acid bodies everything's in the ground <laughs> hellraiser goes home he wins <laughs> yes <laughs> hard to argue with that dude i love, I love it. pinhead that character is just great so fuck yeah pinhead for the win gotta, gotta now, i'll tell it. you what if there had been a dog in that fucking killer cage oh, parker ray would have won <laughs> yeah he would have nodded pinhead Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> All right, well, speaking of the killer cage match, we've got quite the match here going on. So we got a voicemail uh, from Pierre Poutine that I'm going to play for the listeners uh, so that they can hear this. And I don't know, Chris, if you had a, a chance to listen to this yet, but uh, you get to hear this. Uh, live with everybody else so let's uh let's pause for a second hey there pete this is pierre poutine eh i just wanted to weigh in on some of the bullshit that i've been hearing from sick river and old creole butthole you know i've been down here in the 419 visiting punk eh? he's been introducing me to some of the ladies and we found all of joey's lost weed so we've been smoking that and coming up with a little bit of a game plan here eh those motherfuckers, they better watch out. That mullet head sick ripper is nothing but a messed up fool. Put down the fucking pipe, sick ripper. The only thing that's going to be sick is when I rip that fucker a new asshole. He's despicable, bringing guns and chairs into the ring. Hopefully the new promoter, what's his name, uh, Bobby Biscotti? Uh, no, 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 Bobby uh, Calzone is going to have some of his crew standing by to make sure this is going to be a clean fight, eh? If not, I might have a little something up my sleeve this time. We don't have guns up here in the 204, but I might just have to bring my big beaver poking stick. I tell you what, I've been training hard every day ever since our last humiliation. I've been on a strict diet of poutine, maple syrup, and back bacon. I could rip the fucking antlers off a moose. And Punky, he's looking fucking ripped too, eh? We are ready to tune these motherfuckers up, that's for sure. So peace out, Pete. And Sick Ripper, we will see you in the fucking ring, eh? <laughs> wow. The motherfuckers said my beaver poking stick. <laughs> Pierre Poutine just fucking... Wow, throwing down the gauntlet. Jesus Christ. He is on Sick Ripper fucking just fucking. Said, that mullet meth head, what, what did he say? Yeah, he, he was said ripping he's in a 419 with Punky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's some good stuff there, man. Hanging out with Punky and Punky's getting ripped. And right, he's talking ripped. about being a, some, talking about Sick Ripper being a methed out motherfucker in the 419 with Punk, dude. That's calling the You got to watch call. out. You got to watch out hanging out with Punky. You're going to be Pierre Poontang. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I've got another one that just came in from Joe Ball that I want to play Fucking here and Joe. let you guys check this out because we know Joe Ball is uh, one special motherfucker. So <laughs> let's, uh, let's listen to this here real quick. Hey, murder, murder, mayhem. It's Joe Ball, your favorite fucking psycho diver at the Dennis here in Texas. I heard y'all got a big match coming up. I hear that sick ripper fool and old Creole coming up against that bitch-ass punky and Pierre Poutine. I'm on sick ripper's team, you know that. Me and old Creole are going to fuck some shit up with our gators. You know that shit as well, motherfuckers. I'll see y'all down in New Orleans. So there you go. Joe fucking Ball. Joe Ball coming back. What yeah, the fuck is Joe going Ball's on? Joe Ball's fucking throwing down the gauntlet. <laughs> and he 
is with Old Creole and Sick Ripper. So, yeah. so you got got the like, lines in the sand drawn. I, I, I very see clearly. Joe Ball and Creole together. Yeah, for sure. But for Sick sure. Ripper, but I didn't see fucking Creole and Sick <laughs> Ripper together at the same time. So, yeah. I, 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 yeah, you know, like just like wrestling, they jump sides, yes, right? Sir. <coughs> so uh, apparently. Um, uh, Bobby Gavone has told me that the other wrestler we've been hearing about, Stanislaw Grabowski, the touchy pole, huh. he, he's on his way. He's driving right now to the 419 to meet with Punky and Pierre at Tony Paco's. Oh, man. They're going to discuss their plan. They should not disgrace that beautiful fucking establishment. <laughs> And then, despite Bobby's efforts, like, behind the scenes, he was not able to bribe enough people to get old Creole out of jail in time. So That's fucked. Creole's doing 60 days for this prostitution sting at the Boudreaux Inn. So that's why we have to move the match from next week until the week after. But because uh, old Creole's got an ankle fucking monitor, he can't leave the state. Uh, so now shit. we're doing it in New Orleans at Caesar Superdome, and it's going to be called the Brawl on the Bayou. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's that's the setup here. This is going to be fucking, fucking nuts. Old Creole needs to stay his ass out of fucking goddamn jail, dude. Well, I mean, he's at the Boudreaux Inn, you know, doing what he's doing over there. So it's going to be interesting. And we're going to talk. Bobby Gavone's going to talk to the fighters before the match. He's going to talk to them at the end after it's over with. We'll see who's the last man or last team standing. Oh, we'll see what the fuck is going on. It's going to be amazing. So you guys want to keep listening to us for this shit. All right, so the bonus episode you guys are going to get next week while <laughs> Christmas break is going on um, is going to be um, a medley of sorts of the new 666 second spots. I'll give you some of the metal, some of the murder, kind of a medley, and you get to hear what we're doing over there on YouTube. So if you like what you hear, you could come over there and join us on YouTube, get a different... Gotta visual experience with murder the, the holiday Man. season got us all fucking super like wait hold on we can't do this right now yeah like, there's a lot going on right now so and joey's schedule definitely with you know being Christmas, in retail and shit thing. yeah fuck that dude so uh so that's why we're gonna bump it but mainly because old creole and his uh his prison sentence there so all right so creation of chaos four appreciate had a few listeners pick up copies of that here recently i appreciate that very much petealtieri.com i'll link to that as well in the episode description i got a sale going on got audio books there got novels short stories uh whatever your your taste is it's going to be some uh dark and twisted horror shit but come check out dude he's got fucking really good books man thank you thank you all right, well, I think we've done plenty of mayhem tonight. So, guys, let's hit that fucking outro one more time in 2023. Let's do it. Fuck yeah, man. Dreadhammer from India. I love those guys. Last Man Standing. They got a video for that one. Those guys are kick-ass. Some old school thrash right there for you from India. I like the name Dreadhammer. I do, too. Kind of cool. Yeah. All right, Joey, what about the bumper music tonight? (coughs) Uh, Tonight we listened to Cannibal Corpse, Dreadhammer, and Rephobia. Fuck yeah. Nice so shit. glad about that tip on Rephobia, Joey. That was a good one. Yeah. Metal segment intro, Chris. Always fucking the goddamn great metal motherfucker by Chrysix. Fuck oh, yeah. yeah. Murder Metal Mayhem intro, Crawl Space by Low 12. Thanks to all of you out there listening. 
Uh, keep seeing we the numbers. We appreciate you all. You're the shit. Yeah, we appreciate it. Thanks for having, you know, great 2023. We really enjoyed it, and we'll keep rolling with this as long as we keep enjoying it. So, Chris, how about that first comment that we're going to read? We First of all, motherfucking one we got right here, we got Sandra Greenslaw says, uh, I'm in Finland and really love your podcast. Oh, yeah. You guys sound like so much fun to hang out with. I really like the Hart Brothers stories. Never heard of them before. Probably not being from Finland and they're from <laughs> the Midwest in the United States. Yeah, and Joey, you were just yeah, talking I'm about torso you fuck too from Finland, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, uh, that, I thought that was cool. Yeah, say, thanks, Andre. Glad you appreciated it. Yeah, thank you. Joey, how about that second one? Uh, Rika Fish 69 said, Love Murder Metal Mayhem and have for the past three years. You guys are fucking hilarious. Always learn more about the serial killers you talk about than I do from other places out there. Fuck the rest. All right. Hell yeah. That's what's up. Thanks, Reek. And then Dash My Hopes 3 comments, My husband and I learned you guys, learned, heard you guys on a road trip. We've heard that many times. On a road trip with friends to Florida last week, you had the entire van laughing the whole ride home. <clears throat> you guys are great, so that's awesome. <laughs> and then Chris, the last that one last we got one? here is uh, Freddie Fringers, your mom. <laughs> says, uh, I'll see you guys every week on my third shift security job in Dallas. Love what you do, and please don't stop doing it. Well, you will try not to. We're doing everything we can. We love it. Thank you for listening. We got another comment. Hey, Freddie, can I finger your mom? I wanted to uh, read to you guys. I sent this to Joey, but this is, uh, what What do you, What does he go by, Joey? You called him a minute ago? <laughs> Morg Mike. Morg Mor Mike. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Morg Mike um, <laughs> said, uh, what did he say? He says, I'm burning through old episodes. I've tried to listen to other known podcasts like yours, and I can't do it. You guys are the best by far. So, nice. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, thanks, Mike. That's fucking cool to say, Hell dude. Yeah. Really appreciate Fuck. that. All right, check out our website, MurderMetalMayhem.com. That's how you get our shirts. We got our activity books, die cut stickers, and our album, our digital album, Hysterical, Distasteful, and Stupid, Volume 1. First so, album we've ever put out. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Joey's Distro, I'll link to that in the episode description. Joey, I'm sure you'll have a lot going on next year after the crazy holiday season is over with. Yeah, I've actually... I my distro's even it's different now but i just need to fucking get time to sit down and update it but right. all right yeah. that's cool uh you can like us on facebook we do have a facebook group um follow us on twitter subscribe to the youtube channel we have an instagram page now shane's handling that so that's super cool um the 666 seconds videos are really successful so we appreciate it if you're here from youtube thanks for checking it out i hope you stick around you could join the 666 club be a patron and that's only three dollars a month if you do it on the website it's even cheaper than that so come get it all right well we can't let him go without hearing a karaoke song i wanted to play this one little christmas ditty for you i did quite some years ago so let's crank this shit up and until next time keep one foot in the gutter and keep that hammer smashing a poser's face i had to do it just once <laughs> grandma got sodomized by your reindeer walking over our house christmas eve you can't say there's no such thing as satan but as for me and Grandpa, we believe She'd been drinking too much eggnog And we begged her not to go No, no, you are But she wanted to party So she stumbled out the door with some blow When they found her Christmas morning At the scene of the attack she had her prints on her forehead And some reindeer tears frozen to her back Oh, that's fucking gross Grandma got sodomized by a reindeer 
Walking home from our house, Christmas Eve. You can say there's no such thing as Satan. But as for me and Grandpa, we believe. Now we're all so proud of Grandpa. He's been taking this so well. He loves surfing porn all day. Drinking beer and smoking bowls with Cousin Bell. It's not Christmas without Grandma. All the family's dressed in black. And we just can't help but wonder. Why did she spend so much time on her breast? Send them back. Grandma got sodomized by a reindeer. Walking home from our house Christmas Eve. You can say there's no such thing as Satan. But as for me and Grandpa, we believe. Now the goose is on the table. And the pudding made of fig And the blue and studded dildo That would just have matched the hair in Grandma's wig I've warned all my friends and neighbors Better watch out for yourselves They should never give a license To a man who drives a sleigh and plays with himself Grandma got sodomized by a reindeer Walking home from our house Christmas Eve You can say there's no such thing as Satan But as for me and Grandpa, we believe Sing it, Grandpa Grandma got sodomized by a reindeer Walking home from our house Christmas Eve You can say there's no such thing as Satan but as for me and Grandpa, we believe, yeah, yeah. Mother! Mother!